Hello learners and welcome to our maths class. The topic today is trigonometry 3 and the subject is waves. Taking you through is Vincent de Um So, what is a wave? So, from the definition here, a wave is a continuous transmission of a disturbance. And these are just the dramatic representations of the waves themselves. Then we dive into the amplitude. What is the amplitude of a wave? An amplitude of a wave is the maximum displacement about the main position. If I can just show you here, this is my main position, and then this is my crest, and this is my shaft. So the maximum displacement is what the turning point of the crest and the main position. The turning point of the trough and the main position. So for our case here, it's since here we have a one, so you can just say the amplitude is one and it might be also on the other lower side, which is a negative one, which shows us that the amplitude of waves can have either two values, a positive value which is to the upper side of the mean position or a negative value which is to the lower side of the mean position. However, if we could just take a look at this, there are times where our mean position does not always lie on the x-axis. So, we tend to find the mean position on a different position rather than the usual one, x-axis, as we have seen in the first case. So, from here, you can see that this is zero. And then the value here which coincides with the turning point is a 3 and beneath here it's a negative 5. So how do you find the position of your mean position? You can just add the 2, then you divide by, you just find the difference between the 2, you just find the 3, minus minus 5, you get it's an 8. But then the mean position cuts the waves into two equal parts. So you divide it by two. So you find that the mean position is supposed to be four units from each side. So the mean position is supposed to be four units from the three. So from the three, three you go down two, one, zero, and the fourth unit brings us to y equals negative 1. So for our case here, the mean position equals to the line y equals to negative 1. I hope that's clear. Then, we're going to cover the next thing. A period. What is a period? A period, these are the degrees that make up a complete cycle. What is a cycle? A cycle is a crest and a trough. A cycle comprises of Two things, a crest, a complete crest, and a complete trough. So, for my case here, this is my complete crest, here, here, and now this is the trough. So my period is 360 degrees according to my scale here. So when they ask you the period, you have to give it in terms of degrees, as per our definition here. These are the degrees that make up a complete cycle. However, there are some cases whereby you might find the cycle beginning from this point to this point. So you just find the difference in degrees. The final degree here is 360 minus 0, that's 360 degrees. It's similar to here. You just read beneath and beneath and find your period. Okay. So in general, if you're given the equation y equals to k sin b, theta, where k and b are constants. This means that the values of k, you might find that y equals to 3 sine 2 theta, for example. These are the constants. This, the value of k, represents the amplitude of the wave without having to draw the wave on a graph paper. You can just find it through just looking at the value of k, which is the coefficient to the left, of the sign and b which is just the value immediately 
the, the value immediately before the value of the angle. So let's say this is 3 sine 2 theta. For my case here, my amplitude is 3. If it was y is equal to 5 sine 4 theta, my amplitude is 5. Then to the second low. The period is given by 360 divided by b. So if we can just relate these two equations, the value of k is 3 and the value of b is 2. So if you want to find the period t, you take 360 degrees divided by b. So for our case here, it might be 360 degrees divided by 4. Let's look at a couple of examples from the general equation y is equal to k sine b x. So, without drawing, find the amplitudes and the periods of the following waves. A. Y equals to 3 sine 4x. So, from this, what is the value of k? So, the value of k from this equation equals to 3. What is the value of b? The value of b equals to 4. So, how do we find the amplitude? The amplitude of the wave is simply the value of k. So, equals to the amplitude of our wave equals to 3. But then, how do we find the period of the same wave? From the general equation y is equals to k sin bx, we had that formula, I don't know if we can recall it, which stated that period is given by 360 degrees divided by the value of b. And remember that the value of b in our case was 4. So the period is going to be given by 360 divided by 4, which is 90 degrees. Let's go on to our second example, y equals to cos x. So, there's one thing I want you to know. This equation is the same to y is equals to 1 cos 1 x. As you can see, 1 times cos is the same as cos, 1 times x is the same as x. Applying the general formula y is equals to k sin bx, y is equals to k sin bx, we can see that y equals to cos sin bx for our case here, since the, the value given here is a cos not a sine, we can see that the value of k equals to 1 and the value of b from the equation equals to 1. So, what is the amplitude? The amplitude is given by the value of k. So the amplitude in our case here is 1. And how do we find the period? The period from the general formula y is equals to k because px is given by 360 divided by b. But then the value of b in our case was 1. So which gives us 360 divided by 1. Which results into 360 degrees.